Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in Chalfont St Peter again. I'm carrying on with this heritage walk, which has these plaques all around Chalfont St Peter. Hmm, nice car. Um, I'm actually standing, where I'm standing here, this was the original main road. Now, if we see where the classic car's going, he's going up Rickmansworth Lane. We're gonna go and have a look at that in a minute. But the original road to Amersham would have been just there where the wall is. That's the new road. But as for the plaques that we've followed in part one and part two, the last time I came to Chump St Peter, I'll come back again today to do the ones further away from the village centre. The first one is just here. And it was a little cottage called Peewick Castle. So um, it was home to a man called Mr Bastion. He grew flowers. Now, unfortunately, the cottage has been demolished, but it says it's the name's been reused on one of the maisonettes. Well, there's a little mistake there. They're not maisonettes, they're terraced houses. I know, because I've been inside one years ago, but it's that one there. So they're actually three-story terraced houses. And yeah, this one here on the end, the name lives on. It's called Peewick Castle. So whoever lives in there, they can say they live in the castle. The next two plaques are only just over here, the bottom of Rickmansworth Lane and Copfall Lane. Just here, there was a pub called the Magdalen Horses, which unfortunately was demolished last year, which is a real shame. Um, I used to go in there sometimes. So we're a bit away from the village centre, about a quarter of a mile away, but you know, it was used by people who live in the large residential areas here. Now, one thing I find quite interesting is this. So this is the old Copfall Lane. That's Rickmansworth Lane. Bear in mind, these would have been little lanes, not the big sort of residential roads they are today. And um, that grassy area there, that would have had cottages on. So it's strange how some areas have been built up, but then other areas that were built up are now green again. So I'm going to take you across Cotful Lane and I'm going to show you the next couple of plaques. We're going to have to go up Cotful Lane soon. That bloke seems determined to make a ridiculous noise typical white van man and um, anyway so here we have Rickmansworth Lane have a look at that one so you can see it's looking south so there were cottages right here and where all the hoarding is that's where the wagon and horses pub was now if we cross the road see our next ones that's looking up Rickmansworth Lane you can see what it looked like So there'd have been cottages there, and the big house you see there is this one here, through the trees. It's, it's called the Hill House, so there'd have been cottages there. And um, yeah, it's changed quite a bit. I'm now gonna walk up Cotful Lane, and our next plaque is right in the middle of a residential area. So, um, see you there. So I've now come about halfway up Cotful Lane, so, it's very much a residential area now, but as I said, it would have once been just a little quiet country lane. There'd have been a few houses about, but certainly none of what you see today. There's a road here, though, called Hill Farm Road, one of the many residential roads that goes off Cotful Lane. And the next plaque is right down here. Now, um, one interesting thing I've heard about is um, all these houses you see here, all these ones built out of old stocks, were built by a builder called Mr Stringer. They built most of Chalfont St Peter. So you'll see their houses along, but as you go further up Cotful Lane, I remember once from talking to a lady who lived there, she said the other design of houses were built by a builder called Jeans. So when we get back out onto Cotful Lane, I'll show you um, where the sort of the stringer development ended and the Jeans development started. So um, here we are coming down Hill Farm Road. So as you can see, it's a very open plan little road, very pleasant place to live. Um, and the plaque we're going to is right down the end. Now, I said it's called Hill Farm Road, to give you um, an idea. In fact, you know, we're on the hill and there was once a farm here, because indeed this would have all been farmland. And like I said, there was just a few little lanes like Cotful Lane in part two, we came across Joiners Lane, which went up from the village centre. So um, we would have, I'd have been walking through open fields. I'd probably be surrounded by cows if I was doing this walk a hundred years ago. So as we come down here, and the road bends down here. You can see some of these oak trees that would have been here a lot longer than the, um, these houses are. These houses have come. So these oak trees, if they could speak, they would tell probably a very interesting tale of as to how um, the area 
has changed. So as we come down into this shady area here, I can just see the plaque I'm looking for right at the end of the road. So as soon as we get there, I'll be able to show you, like I said in part one too, with this series, it's effectively like looking at a past and present book, except you are here in the present and the plaques show you the past. So what this plaque shows us is the house, Hill Farm. There we are. So one of its barns has been moved to the Chiltern Open Air Museum, which is quite an interesting open air museum on the um, kind of on the edge of Chalfont St Peter near to Chalfont St Giles. So maybe one day we could go and make a video there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk back to Copful Lane. And um, the next bit isn't a plaque, but I want to show you where the uh, Stringer development ends and the Jeans development begins. So I'm going to now carry on back to Copful Lane. So we're now back on Cotful Lane. There the Stringer houses over there and um, the Jeans houses begin just up here. So the last few houses on that side of the road are built by Stringer. Um, there's one or two older houses that would have been here, um, you know, way longer when it was just a lane. One's like that one in there, it's quite a big one. And I remember, see there, there's two newer houses. They were built in my lifetime. I remember those two being built and then there's um there's my dad out for riding his bike um oh here we are so this is where the jeans houses begin so if you look at these ones here these were built by jeans and then there's the final house there to be built by stringer up here um there's a few more stringers on that side but all of these now and both roads off on each side of the road were built by jeans i'm now going to carry on up to Rickmansworth Lane, um, sorry, Denham Lane up there, and now I'm going to carry on. I'm going to go past the top of Rickmansworth Lane, and we're going to end up um, at the next plaque. So here we are on Denham Lane. This is what I found when I got to the end of Cotful Lane. I've come along Denham Lane now about half a mile. On the other side of the fence here, undergoing a bit of redevelopment, is the um, National Centre for Epilepsy. I've done a video on that before, so have a look. There's a link in the video now, so have a look at that video. When we come to today, now I appreciate I'm showing you right into the sun, so what I'll do, I'll um, come back later and I'll take a picture and insert it like I have already been doing. It was the Winds Medical and Commercial Herb School, founded by Maud Grieve. She's perhaps best known for her 1931 book, The Modern Herbal, so that she must have had the winds must have been I suppose there, where those houses are, on the other side of the road. I'm now going to walk along beside the National Centre for Epilepsy. So you can see, it's interesting, that building there, that's one of, not that one, that one. That's one of the older ones. I know you can't see it particularly well, but that's one of the older ones which um, they decided not to demolish and uh, refurbish and reuse, which I think is really nice. Um, and I must say, some of the newer buildings do look um, quite attractive. Some new buildings you get these days you know are just sort of boxes but they you know look look quite nice so yeah a lot of redevelopment going on the next plaque is just up here so in the video where we did uh, the um national center for epilepsy you may remember we came up a road called monument lane now the top of monument lane is just there so to hear all about that like i said do watch my other video we're coming up to what is possibly the most interesting feature on this part of Charlton St Peter and that is the Gotts Monument. So we're going to see it very soon. It's kind of hiding in the trees but it's, um, as you, I don't want to spoil the surprise too much when you see it but I've already said it's a monument so I bet you can gather it's a monument of some sort. So right here we are. So here's the main entrance to the National Centre of Epilepsy and um, just there by the gates that is the Gotts Monument. It used to be twice the height it is today, but unfortunately it was struck by lightning. So let's go and have a look at the plaque. And um, you can see what it once looked like. So here we are, it's um, not the easiest monument to photograph, but there it is. And that's what it once looked like. So you can see it was rather tall. And that building, that is still there. So it was built in 
1875 by Sir William Gott, who lived at the nearby Newland Park. New Newland Park is where I mentioned where the Chalfont Open Air Museum was, but as it says here, it was struck by lightning and unfortunately the top half collapsed. So I'm now going to walk on um, back down to the main Amersham Road for our next part of the video. I think the way I'm going to go, um, there's nothing to really show you in the video, but I'm going to go that way, is down there, Misbourne Avenue, um, and that will take us down to the Amersham Road. So I've come down Misbourne Avenue, I'm down by the A413. I'm actually standing on the old road here. The new road is just there. So you can see as they've widened it, this, what I'm walking on now, wouldn't be you know, enough for today's traffic. Now, the next plat we're coming to is by what's said to be one of the oldest buildings in Chalfont St Peter's. So about now, we're about half a mile away. There's an old classic sports car going along the A413. We're about half a mile away now from the um, village centre. And the plaque I want to show you, there's this little dead end road here called Old Mead. And here it is. So it's called Wheatley's. It's possibly the oldest surviving building in the village. The picture shows it in the 1900s, although it dates back to the 15th century. And it was a guest house at one point for three guineas a week. Now, what I want to show you is, if you have a look there, if you can see it, the chimney, that is still there, but it's been extended outwards. So if we now step out here and have a look, you can see the chimney. And then what's this side of the chimney is a modern extension. But just to show you, um, how it was. You can see a bay window below the chimney. Well, that bay window is still there, and it looks as though that was possibly the original entrance to the house. So what I'm going to do now, to the next plaques are about a quarter of a mile that way towards the village centre, um, back closer to where we started. So I've kind of done a longer loop around this side of the village. But what I thought we'll do, seeing as we're here, Rather than take you back along the road, if we go into the Misbourne Valley, there's a really nice little bridge over the Misbourne. So get across the road. I shall show you where I'm going to take you to. Public footpath. We go down here. And we're now crossing the drive to, um, I think it's called Water Hall. It used to be a restaurant. I think it's just a private residence now. But the footpath takes us down here into the fields. And um, I'm going to finish this clip by the river and then I'm going to walk along the banks um, back into Chalfont St Peter where I'm going to show you um, the final, I think we're down to three more plaques out of, you know, I haven't counted, so I'm not sure how many I've done. Um, but uh, quite a few, quite a few in three parts videos. So Water Hall is the building just down there. So here we are in the Misbourne Valley proper. Here's the river itself. There's a rather, um, rickety old two plank bridge over the river it's getting a bit muddy um but not enough to stop me from enjoying the walk so here we are here's the river misborn like i said we are in the future i'm gonna do a video of my intention is to walk all the way from great missingdon that way right down to denham that way at some point in the future i've already done one on the free tributaries in chalfont st peter so have a look out for that video put a link in now Look at this bridge, look how rickety it is. I'm not even sure if I should walk on that left flank, it might break. And then this one is full of water. Um, so yeah, here we are. Well, it's, it's, it's all right to walk on. Um, do I put my foot? So I mean, it's, it's a bit bouncy, but no, it is safe. So I'm gonna carry on over to the stile and along the river. And the next part of the video, we should be closer to the village centre again. So we're now walking along the Misbourne Valley back towards Chalfont St Peter Village Centre, just walking past Mill Meadow. Now if you're wondering why I've got different clothes on, that is because, um, well breaking the fourth wall here, after filming this video, which I filmed about two days after they eased the, the lockdown restrictions, I was out for a walk and I discovered a plaque I had missed. So I've come back here and, and inserted it into the video where it would be. So I'm going to show you that plaque and then um, once we've seen that one, we shall jump forward to, jump back two weeks rather, for the rest of the video. So if you have a look here, there's a plaque, oh, just here. Now this shows there was a swimming pool here, which was in the fields over there. Now, from talking to some elderly residents in the village, 
they can remember seeing this swimming pool here. So it was built in 1933, it was fed by the Misborn. So when the Misborn dried up, I believe it didn't have any water in. We are gonna do a video in the future on the River Misborn and I'll explain in that how it does sometimes dry up, etc. So I'm now gonna carry on walking back towards um, Chalfont St Peter Village Centre and um, the rest of the video will be back to what I filmed two weeks ago. So I've had a very pleasant walk along the Misborn Valley. I'm now much closer to the village centre of Chalfont St Peter. Here is the main road, which um, the reason I came along the Misborn Valley was so I didn't have to walk just along beside the main road. Now I get to here, this is the ambulance station. And here is the next plaque, and have a look at that. Shows the old road, how it used to be, how they've had to demolish all these buildings when they widened it. So if we now have a look here, you can see it's really just a road with cars parked. So it's a bit of a shame now. Looking back this way towards the village centre, all of this, as I said in part two, the high street came right out onto where the dual carriageway was. So imagine all of this was once part of the high street. So most of the high street at Chalmers St Peter was unfortunately demolished for this. So this is what it used to look like. So there have been two pubs, the, the King's Arms Inn and the Rose and Crown. And I believe this building here would have been Grassingham House, which would have been about there somewhere. The road that goes up into a residential area, where that white car is now, that is Grassland Road, named after the house. So yeah, a bit of a change. Um, not necessarily for the better, but then I suppose where else could they have put the bypass in? I suppose the only other place could have been, say, along the back along here. But then of course you've got the River Misborn, um, which I'll talk more about this when I get around to doing a series on the River Misborn, but because it's a chalk stream, it does dry up. And it's said that um, when they did the bypass in Amersham, that didn't help matters. Anyway, um, I'm going to carry on walking to the end of these trees where the next plaque is. So here we are walking beside the River Misborn. There's a bridge here, it's called the Vic Wootton Bridge. Vic Wootton was someone who helped with rescuing the river when it seemed like it was dried up forever. I remember the bridge before this one was a lot lower and whenever the water got to any height, the water always flew over the top of the river. The other interesting thing I find here is that the course actually used to go straight on up there and then take a kink by the Greyhound pub. Now it goes straight across because when it kept flooding, they wanted to give the river a straighter route. So from what the river looks like today to what the River Misborn used to look like, here we have a plaque to show us. So there was a weir and a water mill. So the mill must have been somewhere round here and then the river would have been slightly higher, you know, bricked up or banked up to create a mill pond to turn the water wheel. And all of that was demolished when they built the bypass. So we've now pretty much had our, finished our adventure around Chalfont St Peter. We've just got one more plaque to see and that's in the village car park. Now you may remember when we were in the churchyard, I showed you a plaque showing the old rectory from one side. Well, we're effectively round the back of where the rectory once stood but it's um, not so exciting now, what used to be there. Just an empty village car park, Sunday afternoon, no one's here. Um, but the interesting thing about this plaque is it's the only one in colour. So I'm gonna show that to you now, and um, that will kind of conclude our little trip around Chalmont St Peter. So there's the church, there's the rectory. Now there was a pond here, which um, would have also had a weir flowing into the River Mismore. So I'm probably standing in the pond, probably somewhere here where I am now, the rectory would have been over there and of course there's a church and um, there was an earlier church on the site it's not the original one and the residents of the rectory you know used to find stones and that from the old church in in their garden so this is the greyhound pub which we had a look at in part two here is the river mismo what i thought i'd do we'll finish the video where we started in the village center so let's just walk along here and um, we shall have come full circle so to speak so the river flows along here we're just coming to where the culvert is that takes it under the um, the 1960s 
St. Peter's Court over there. That's the old George pub. There's Bridge House there. So here is the culvert. That's where the Misborn disappears. And um, here we are. We finish in Chalford St. Peter's Village Centre. So I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, if you're ever out this way, you know, do call in and visit Chalford St. Peter. You can pick up the guide from the local library and um, have a walk around, perhaps discover them, maybe not all of them because it does take quite a long time, but some of them for yourself and um, enjoy visiting Chalfons St Peter. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.